Do you want to make your first short film but don't know how to shoot the scenes? You want to capture different camera angles but you only have one camera. How do filmmakers create the illusion of multiple cameras? Where do you even start? This video will teach you how to create the illusion of multiple cameras with just one and make a more professional looking short film. Keep watching. Grab your camera and shoot some. This is Rebel Filmmakers. Rebel filmmaker. I'm gonna teach you the basics of shooting any scene as usually movies handle this. By the way, welcome to Rebel Filmmakers. My name is Reynaldo Cantu and... Reynaldo, are you going to talk about blocking a scene? Yes, Lucy. I'm gonna talk about that too. I want to explain what is blocking a scene. Okay, okay, you win, Lucy. Let's talk about the actual process of filming a scene. The first step is planning your shot. You must decide what angles and perspectives you want for your scene and plan where each element should go. Once you have that down, step number two is blocking the scene. Lucy, you know what blocking the scene means, right? Oh, you got me unguarded. Blocking is choreographing and staging the movement and positioning of actors within a film or theatrical performance. It involves deciding where characters will stand, walk, sit, or move in relation to one another and the environment in order to serve the story best. Blocking is an important aspect of filmmaking and is usually planned out before shooting begins to ensure smooth and efficient production. Once you cap your actor's position in the scene, it's important to make sure that the actors keep doing the same moves in the same way every take. This helps the footage match up when it's time to edit and makes the final product look smooth. Your editor will thank you for this. Based on my analysis, it appears that they are probably their own boss, editor, and biggest fan. Yeah, So probably. I guess they'll have to thank themselves, just like you do for yourself. Yeah, probably. Step 3. Make a master shot once you've got the blocking sorted out. This master shot, it's like a wide shot of the complete scene that shows all the characters and their surroundings, so the audience knows where everything is happening. And in the editing room, this master shot might save you if any other of your closer shots don't work for some reason. You'll have this as a backup if you need it. Okay, step 4 is where we're gonna film the whole scene from one angle using the middle shot of one of the actors. This way, we can see everything that is happening on this side of the scene. So if your character is talking or doing something important, we can switch to this angle in the editing and see what the character is doing. Here you can shoot your close-up frames if necessary. So now in step 5 we need to cover the other actor, so we have to shoot the complete scene from the opposite angle of the last one. Following the 180 degree rule is crucial in this context. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me that, Lucy. No problem. It's what I was programmed for. This is right. That's a computer fact, Ronaldo. I'm awesome. Have you ever heard about the 180 degree rule in filmmaking? It's a simple concept that helps keep the shots and a scene consistent and easy to follow. Is a guideline used in cinematography to maintain a consistent spatial relationship between characters in a scene for editing continuity purposes. The 180 degree rule in filmmaking basically divides the scene into imaginary segments. You can place your camera anywhere within one of the segments. Once you choose one half, you have to stick with it. So if you're filming a close-up of one actor on one side of the imaginary line, you have to film the other actor's close-up on the same side of the line. If you cross the line, it will look that the actors are looking in different directions instead of at each other, which can be confusing for the viewer. Same in this another example. Imagine an actor walking on the screen moving to the right. If you want to maintain continuity, the actor should reappear from the left of the frame in the next shot, moving to the right. If you cross the axis and in this next shot the actor goes from left to right, the movement will be in the opposite direction, which will confuse the audience. It's essential to keep this in mind and not make any abrupt changes without explanation. Additionally, some shots are considered neutral, such as a shot of an individual walking towards or away from the camera. These types of shots can be utilized regardless regardless of the position relative to the imaginary line and do not cause confusion for the viewer, making them versatile options. Following the 180 degree rule, filmmakers ensure that shots taken from different angles will still feel coherent and not disorienting when edited together. Once you film your general shots, close-ups and counter shots, it's time for the details. We need to shot the insert shots. These are the shots of details you want to highlight in the scene, like a close-up of a paper the actor is looking at. Just remember to stick with one side of the imaginary line and you'll be good to go. This technique is a very basic technique, but if you don't really know what to do the day you're shooting a scene, you can do this and you'll be fine. 
trust me. And once you master this technique, you can even try to experiment and break the rules maybe, but you have to learn the basics. So this is what you need to learn first. If you like this content, you need to watch this video to learn more. You don't want to miss it. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video. I'll see you in the next Revel Filmmakers video.